left of the box. We're going to get into what Premier Doug Ford said. Ah. Uh, I'm going to get a little upset with this video that we're about to see. Uh, I don't think, there's nothing in this that needs a content warning. It's just, it's rage invoking is what this is. It's it's just rage invoking. And again, I'm just, I'm floored that we can have leaders of provinces get away with this bull****. But uh, some people might have seen this clip floating around. On social media but i went to the source on youtube premier ford holds a press conference joseph godin with uh classic rock and my fm uh what impact do you see on today's announcement having on the over 1,000 people that are currently on wait lists for affordable housing here in northumberland county well first of all let's just run through a few numbers uh when it comes to homeless we put 2.2 million dollars uh, within this this community, and I'll pass it over to the mayor and the minister in a second. And uh, another for the encampments we, for the region, we put 2.47 million dollars. And then the Canada Ontario uh, uh, benefits, uh, uh, housing benefits. There's over 200 million dollars. Do you know what the best way to get people uh, be able to get out of the encampments, uh, get out of homeless, get an application and drop it off one of these companies and start working? You need to start working if you're healthy. Bottom line, if you're unhealthy, I'll take care of you the rest of my life. Your okay. life will take care of you. But if you're healthy, get off your ASS and start working like everyone else's. Very simple. What the f Oh my God, what an absolute piece of sh garbage human being that man is. Okay, he is a Nepo baby. He was born into wealth. He's never had to have a real job before because his family gave him everything that he needs. And to sit there and say, oh, what people need to do is get off their ASS and get a job. How the f are they supposed to get a job when they're unhoused? How do they, how do they apply for a job without, you know, an address, without being able to have access to transportation, potentially clean clothes, showers? Who will hire them? No one, no one will f***ing hire them. It's not a matter of them wanting a job. It's the fact that nobody will hire them because they don't have the address. And what, they're just supposed to randomly pull out an application from their ass? How are they supposed to do that? You know, what kind of jobs can they apply for? Does they actually have to match their skill sets? Of course they do. So they can't just apply for any old job and expect to get it. And most jobs these days require that you apply online. How many of these people actually have regular access to the internet? Probably not too many of them. But here he is. It's like, oh no, if you're actually disabled, I'll help you. No, he f***ing won't. I have to rely on disability as payment, and my entire check doesn't cover rent for a one f***ing bedroom. Most of the people who are ending up homeless right now, it's because they live off a of disability and can't afford anywhere to live. And why can't they afford anywhere to live? Because he got rid of the goddamn rent controls. Like, what are we supposed to do here? What the f*** is wrong with this man? And how is it that there were even people clapping in the background there instead of just totally booing shit out of him? Like, this is not okay in the slightest that here he is, the Premier of Ontario, just telling people to get off their ass and go get a job because it's that simple. Just like that, they can go get a job. Whereas many people... You know, they have jobs and they're still unhoused because those jobs don't pay enough to cover the cost of living, to cover rent, to cover housing, to cover groceries. It's not as simple as just applying for any old job and getting it. And if he thinks that it is that easy to get a job, then I call on him from now on, his family's business, his office in, in government. From now on, they only hire unhoused people. Accept those applications. Help them yourselves get off that street by taking in people, only people from encampments. Just only accept their applications from now on if you think it's so goddamn easy for people on the streets to get a f***ing job.
<laughs> I know what it's like trying to get a job. And, and here's the thing. There are lots of jobs I can do at this very moment, despite my disabilities. But there are very specific jobs that I could do in the capitalist system. But is he going to force those people to hire me? You know, am I allowed to just go around to different companies and interview them and see which one would be the best fit for me, ones that I'm capable of doing with my disabilities? And then Doug Ford come in and say, okay, now you have to hire her. Now you're forced to hire her. You have to. They won't hire me. All the jobs that I could perform, they won't no. hire me. I don't have a college diploma. I have mental health issues. I'm on disability. I can't afford the training needed, the certification needed, the clothing needed. You need money in order to get a job, which sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Because sometimes you need the transportation to get there. You might, you need to be able to eat meals so you don't pass out from starvation while you're doing these jobs so that you're able to think properly. A lot of jobs require you have special equipment or special uniforms, which they don't provide you. You have to pay for. You know all those retail stores in the malls where you see people in clothing stores and makeup and all that sort of stuff? They're only allowed to wear what that store offers. So you have to have money to buy all of that ahead of time. This is just so goddamn... Like, he has no sense of what actual human beings go through. But how are you supposed to get off the street without the supports from, from what the government's supposed to do? Just so... Uh, so infuriating. And he's doubling down on it now, from what I've seen on comments and stuff. He, he's not regretful for what he said. He's doubling down and he tries to say, oh, if you actually need the help, I'm here to help you. With what? Access to mental health care? No. Uh, health care in general? No, he's cutting the hell out of that. Housing made it far worse for people. How exactly is he helping people who can't get a job? In Doug's, so this is from Emil J. Joseph, PhD. In Dougie's first year, he cut social services by $1 billion, removed rent control, cut the basic income pilot, canceled minimum wage increase, cut mental health funding, and cut WSIB payments for injured workers. OW and ODSP are not enough to live on. He has put Ontario on its ass. And here is Dr. Adil uh, something. Doug Ford has one of the biggest... ASS moments yesterday. Graduates can't get hired. One million people visited food banks last year. That's not an exaggeration. Rents have increased or risen by 83% since this asshat got into power. ODSP and Ontario Works have been gutted. Shelters are full. full. Shouldn't you get to work, Ford Nation? So this guy is an MP. I haven't actually watched his video on it. Uh, let's see what he has to say. Yeah, he's... He's the Liberal Party, most likely, I think. MP for Don Valley East. Doug Ford just had one of his biggest ASS moments. People are in encampments and they are homeless because rents have skyrocketed by 83% since he took power. It's because he's gutting programs like ODSP and Ontario Works. It's because he's allowed the cost of living to spiral out of control. And it's because he has underfunded shelters that are now all over capacity. Doug Ford just had one of his biggest ASS moments. People. And there's also this video here from Frank um, Dominic. He does a lot of TikToks. Tic TikToks, TikToks and things of that sort. And he was also pretty outraged by this. He says, Doug Ford, man whose first job was 
illegal and whose first legal job was given to him by his father is accusing people in tough situations who can't afford housing of being lazy. Doug Ford is a disgusting, reprehensible human being. When he was asked about the waitlist for affordable housing, he said, if you're healthy, get off your ASS and start working like everyone else. Here's the clip. But if you're healthy, get off your ASS and start working like everyone else's. Very simple. Okay, Doug, you want to do this? Let's do this. First off, you barely work as it is. Your parliament sits less than any other in Ontario history. And Doug, if it was that easy to find a good paying job and to find a place that was affordable to live in, we wouldn't have so many people who are unemployed and underemployed and people who can't find an affordable place to live. But I wouldn't expect you to understand this because your first job was as a drug dealer, but after that, with your father's company. Then you inherited your father's company and according to your brother's widow, ran it into the ground. And then once again, running off of the goodwill of your father and the political success of your brother, you became a city councillor in Toronto and then the Premier of Ontario after Patrick Brown had to step down. Your entire life has been failing upwards. So don't you goddamn say that people need to get off their ASS and get to work. You don't even know what it's like to be a real person. Doug Ford is a- Yeah, you can tell he was holding back on trying to not curse throughout the entire thing. Just so vexing, just so blood boiling, like, ah, just. And I actually believe that if there was a provincial election today, he would, he, he, he would win power again. Because that's how unplugged from politics people are. It's so, ah, <sighs> ah, ah. <clears throat> Lady Badass, you should be putting multiple million dollars in it, Doug. Looney Tunes 9000, breach, Sandy. And another thing, why the hell is Trump in Canada anyway? Lady Badass, yes, I'm also on disability, so I totally understand. Genie Bottle, some folks do not know what the poor live like, feel and struggle they have. They were born in elite circumstance, circumstances, yeah. And it's expensive to be poor. A lot of people don't understand how hard it is to get out of the cycle, how hard it is to break out. Because if you look at something like a phone, like having a cell phone, you need that. It's a lifeline. You know, maybe you are trying to get a job and you're waiting for an employer to contact you or you need to contact friends and families, but a cell phone is a lifeline. But if you got behind it, and this has happened to me, got behind or was late on a payment, and it was Rogers at the time, they then cut my cell service. Didn't wait long. They cut it almost immediately. The only number I could then dial was 911. So they cut my cell service. And then do you know what happens? Not only do I have to get caught up on that bill, I now owe them another $50 for them to flip a switch because I was behind. So because I was behind on a payment, they cut the cell service and to reinstate it, it would cost another $50. People who don't live on that much of a type rope have no idea how many extra fees are involved what is needed, how much we have to buy the cheap junk that gets broken, which means that we have to buy it later on again and again and again, as opposed to just being able to buy the one good quality thing when you need it. They just don't understand how expensive it is to be poor and how taxing and exhausting it is. Jeannie Bottle, I worked for Next. They offer you 20% off overpriced clothes to wear at work. Yeah, you sometimes get the employee discount with these sorts of things, but still you have to wear their clothing, wear their makeup if you work in these stores. Um, some sales items um, like knives or something of this sort that you go kind of like door to door with. Well, you have to have your own set ahead of time in order to sell them, which means you have to buy them first. Like there's so much or like you need proper work plans if you're going to go work at a high-end bar. I tried to get a job as a bartender once upon a time, but you know, I didn't have clothes fancy enough for certain types of bars. Uh, proper shoes, proper footwear, proper supports if you need it. Like there's just there's so many things that if you're broke, you can't get. Plus again, if you're in an unhoused encampment, 
how are you supposed to get that shower when you need it to go to that job interview and be presentable? How do you answer the questions from the person interviewing you when they say things like, oh, so what's your job experience like where you are at now? You know, they won't directly ask you if you're unhoused, but you have certain gaps that you won't be able to fill in their questioning, which will immediately put them off. And then there's a stigma around people who are unhoused, that they're not reliable, that they won't come in, that they're uneducated and all this sort of stuff. So as soon as the employer finds out that you're unhoused, they're not going to hire you. Like if it was that easy to get a job, nobody would be living in those encampments. Nobody chooses that because they have a better option that they're just not choosing to take. They're in an encampment because that is the least worst option available to them. If they could just hand in an application and get a job, they would, because nobody wants to be there. Lady Badash, he's helped us by giving us more alcohol. Yeah, that's where his priority lies. Lady Bad Ashford is only slightly more popular than Trudeau, so don't be too sure about that, Sandy. It's not about popularity when it comes to provincial elections and stuff like that, because, again, he only got in with 18% of possible votes in the last election because the voter turnout was so low. And when you have a voter turnout that's so low, the people who come out to vote tend to be the supporters of him to begin with. So when it comes to approval ratings and disapproval ratings, that means squat because that doesn't translate into the people who will then go out and vote. So like lots and lots of people will disapprove of him, but how many of those people will actually go out and vote for a different party to get in? But all those people that approve of him will absolutely go out and vote for him. It's just about suppressing the vote in enough writings while energizing the base and enough other writings and he can get in and Pierre Polyev is going to do the exact same thing. So it is just, ah, oh, first past the post. Oh, if only Justin Trudeau had done something about it way back when. Genie bottle, uh, spot on add on fees are crippling on top too. Mm -hmm. Grand Theft Autobot encampment is better option than, oh, I don't know, dying. Yeah, and for a lot of people, it's also a better option than a lot of the shelter spaces that the city will offer. And I've gone over a litany of reasons before in previous videos, but, you know, a quick rundown would be um, you can't share a room if you have a partner. You can't bring in your pets if you have pets. You're only allowed a certain amount of um, items with you, like a bag full, a backpack full. So all of your other possessions and stuff would have to be thrown out in the garbage. And when you're unhoused, the things you keep on you are things that you need for your immediate survival or have such strong sentimental value, you can't part with it. So then you'd have to pick and choose of that, which would have to then go into the garbage. Um, the places that they offer tend to be uh, in need of repair. So there could be mold, there could be bugs. There's other people around there who are um, unwell that can make you unsafe as well or uh, get you back into, make you feel unsafe when it comes to drugs or having that around you if you're trying to get off of it and all that sort of stuff. Um, maybe there's problematic people you know from your life that are also in that shelter that you can't go in. So there's so many reasons why um, a shelter space offered by the city might not go over well and why these communities then get built because in these communities um, you have other people looking out for you you have a network you have supports you have people who you can talk to who you can relate to you know you 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 make your found family through a lot of the people that you share those encampments with and so you don't have those supports if you get put away in some room in some shelter